Welcome to episode 21 of Cowboy Bebop. Last time was a very unique and honestly incredible episode, and I know from here on out the last few remaining episodes are not going to be anything like that, so that was just this kind of one-off, really fun experience, and now we'll see where we go from there. So we're going to watch it, discuss it at the end. I've got the subtitles and the timer on screen if you want to follow along that way, or you can pull up the whole episode by yourself. But either way, let's go ahead and watch episode 21 Right now, in three, two, one, play. The episode is called Boogie Woogie Feng Shui, so that's an interesting title. But yeah, after uh, Piero Lafou, very, uh, very episodic. Like even within an episodic show, that was one of those. Oh, that that happened, and it was very unique, and I had a lot of fun with it. So you know, and now temper my expectations that that's not going to happen again. That was just this weird Batman the Animated Series episode, and now we're back to back to your regularly scheduled Cowboy Bebop. So we'll see what they do. I still really want to see more resolution with Faye. We still have, like, very little information on Edward. I'd like to get some info on her past and just see her do more, with Ayn preferably. And then, of course, there's resolving things with Vicious and Julia. So, I don't know how much time we have for just episodic random adventures. We're nearing the end. And also, while the OP is playing, let me say that if you enjoyed these videos, subscribe to the channel, because there's a new, ep new episode of Cowboy Bebop every Friday, in addition to the other videos I upload every day. Also, check out the links in the description below. There's Twitter and Discord if you want to come talk, come hang out. And there's Patreon. Supporting me on Patreon helps the channel to stay afloat, and you get videos early, you get to vote on what shows I watch, and stuff like that. So, check all that stuff out. And now, it's time for episode 21, Boogie Woogie Feng Shui. Okay, Alright, starting out in the city... The last episode was just so unique that it's weird to be back to anything else. The way that episode started, where I was just like, what is happening? But, uh, it's a unique setting. Alright, some jet focus. I'm chilling on the couch. The sacred beast from Anzan. Alright, what is that about? Okay, well, see what Jet's up to then. Pipu Cola. Pow. Just an old acquaintance. All right. I like how this is narrated like a classic noir detective story. He's already deceased. I thought feng shui. Yeah, I mean, uh, apparently it's not from him, somebody using his name. Hello. Okay. Feng shui. Whoa, okay. Is like, you know, the art of, like, arranging the things in your house. Okay, this girl is clearly uh, knowledgeable about some things. You've gotten wrapped up into something. So I guess it's a Jet episode. Look at the guy, that guy running down the stairs like that. What was up with that? This girl looks like I don't know what the like the pigtails and the bandana. She could be like a like a Ghibli girl or some such type of thing, you know, like the heroine of a story like that. Good cover. He has no idea what's going on. 
uh, okay. <laughs> what a good face. Holy shit. What are you looking at? Look at Ayn propped up on Ed's head. Oh, he brought her home. He brought a girl over. She looks like... 15? What just happened, Ed? <laughs> okay, yeah, sure. Alright, that's his daughter. Makes sense. She sent it out then, presumably. Yeah, that's all he said. Just acquaintance. He didn't say any more than that. Traffic accident? Is that really how it happened? Is that right? It sounds suspicious, considering there were people trying to kill you just now. Yes? Hello? Are you the girlfriend? <laughs> Holy oaf. <laughs> or that. Not quite either one. I guess she didn't send it then, never mind. And what is that? Maybe he's not even dead. Maybe he faked it. Well, that was before the accident, so yeah, it could have actually been from him. Okay. I wasn't sure if they were implying that it had been sent after he died, and therefore somebody else sent it. Sure. Yeah, I like the... the tone of the episode. Like I said, it's like a classic detective story, helping out some young girl, narrating it like this. Got these mobsters coming after him. Mepha? But visually, they're not going for that at all, like the how you would envision a story like that to look. Not like dark. We're actually in a very bright environment. All right. Well then, if you say so. Okay, interesting. <laughs> Pretty fantastic response. Well, that sounds good. Yes. What could he do? Really? They were not that close? Ah, <laughs> uh, no, 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 that's weird. Don't say that. Don't say that. That's a bad thing to say. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I Just say ice cream again. It's still, uh, I mean, yeah, possible. But it'd be weird. Hey, good shit. 
<laughs> Your ice cream is melting, so... <laughs> Just lick it up, man. Brain freeze. That's a fun little relationship between these two. Alright, we found the place he's supposed to go. Yes? Train? Ah. Okay. This is interesting, like this big city combined with this like detective noir story on a bright city of Mars combined with this feng, this feng shui stuff. It's like a really interesting combination of a lot of different things. And it's kind of cool just as like this little quest that he is on with her. Like, oh, we found the Seiryu, Byako, all this stuff for finding where to go. On the run from the mobsters. I don't know where it's leading at all, but it's cool. Something in the mouth. Something heavy. Or just lodged in there really good. Uh, is it now? Will that thing evolve? My sunkern? Does sunkern evolve via the sunstone? Maybe. It has sun in the name. I had to think something quick. <laughs> My gloom. Nice. What a classy guy. You got the mobsters. One is a skinnier guy, one's a bigger guy. Well, shit, he was prepared. <laughs> That's why he didn't need a glass. You get him, Mefa. Kick his ass. I think I'll tell him. The blue snake. You sure? How about if I don't kill you, though? There you go. You couldn't get pow. So they were after him because he had got the message from Pal. And then those little kids came over. Is that the takeaway from that? Okay, sure. I didn't think that necessarily meant that. Right? Like, they said we couldn't get Pow. I assumed that meant before he died. But, uh, I guess he could still be alive somewhere. Which I did theorize earlier anyway. Oh, rough. They're like, the what? Not around my girlfriend, okay? Had to go outside. Having fun, Ed? There you go. Yeah, why not? Let Ed eat it like she ate the 
with the lobster thing. Well, good job, guys. You, well, I don't know what it means, but you did it. Fill us in. What's going on? What? <laughs> Thank you, Ayn. I agree. Huh? Use your words, woman. Put the thing in there. Alright, you think it's leading to your father. But the fact that you think that makes me think that you're going to find something different there. That he actually will be dead. I mean, I don't know if you want to get a young girl uh, involved in something that crazy. Or maybe he just knew Jet would find you. Is that right? That... Alright. Maybe as like a protective father figure. Right, he wasn't exactly a people person. She lived with her mom. I don't know. We don't know the history between him and Jet. Maybe he had to stay away from her for a better reason. Maybe he thought she'd be in danger if he was around. Yeah. There she is. Yeah, he wanted out, tried to help, but he's just wrapped up in a bad situation. So he distanced himself. I can't imagine we're going to find him. We're, since we're that's what the characters are working with, thinking that they're going to go see him, I imagine they're going to be wrong. What are you doing? <laughs> Just doing Edward stuff. We got something. Something firing at us. Sure, if you want to put it that way. Hello. Alright, we got some uh, enemy combatants. Some drones. Hey, good shit. How lucky for you that you just brought up some fairy tale analogy. And uh, now you get the seven dwarves. Come back. What will that do? Give you like a huge boost? Get you out of there? Am <laughs> I flushing it down the toilet? 
All right, here it goes. It's going to blow the shit out of him. Oh, all right. It opened up a new hole. It looks like it's shrinking. Maybe it was just the angle. It looked like that for some reason. You gonna be okay? Those things are all getting destroyed. Are you, uh... Are you good? Next to this fucking black hole? Hello? Well, what do you know? All right. I'm thinking, like, is that her father ship in there? But I, I, I didn't think he'd be alive, honestly. But sure enough. Maybe he won't be alive for much longer. He, so he did want him to get his daughter involved. He wanted to be able to talk to his daughter. She did. I didn't think it'd play out like this. I thought we would find something unexpected here, but we just actually found him and she just gets to have like a heart to heart resolution with her dad. And there it is. It was a good thing. She got to say goodbye. Oh, all right, so. It's back to the old ways. Well, there we have that episode. Let's go ahead and discuss it. All right, episode 21. From a little bit of reactions that I've seen from other people after the fact, I've seen a lot of people saying this is one of their least favorite episodes of Bebop, and for the reasons that they stated, I, I understand where they're coming from. I didn't really mind it, honestly. I found it mostly entertaining. It's not one of my favorites, but I thought it was good. I, I was kept engaged the entire time. Mefa was fun. I liked her design. I liked her getting along with the jet. I liked the detective, like the classic detective story-esque narration, the feng shui. It had a lot of interesting elements to it. I don't think it all worked together necessarily the best, but it had enough in it. There was enough to it to just keep me at the very least entertained. But yeah, we have this whole feng shui thing, which I had only ever heard in reference to, like, the arrangement of furniture and stuff in your house. You know, people are like, I gotta, I gotta put the chair over in that corner and the plant in that corner and do it this way for the best feng shui. I never really knew much more about it than that, but uh, totally, officially, it is a system of laws considered to govern spatial arrangement and orientation in relation to the flow of energy and whose favorable or unfavorable effects are taken into account when siting and designing buildings. So, there you go. But yeah, there's definitely a lot going on in this episode. 
I feel like there's a lot of different styles they're kind of bringing together because you've got the classic detective story that he's going on investigating what's going on here with the narration which I did enjoy it's very different for Cowboy Bebop Cowboy Bebop is often known to just have long stretches of silence or of just music and normally in an episode you'd have those scenes where Jed is walking and you would just be looking at the environments listening to music and it would be silent other than that so having the narration is pretty different so but what they're going for I, I think kind of worked there but it's not like noir dark visually or anything like that it's actually pretty bright the entire time you've got him helping this young girl who like i said makes me think of just like some kind of ghibli-esque girl with her design like going off on some kind of adventure to find her father you've got this whole feng shui thing introduced there's a lot of different elements like the visuals with the detective crime story with the feng shui with everything else that's just typical of bebop I think, like I said, it was kind of enough different things to make it entertaining, and I thought the fact that they tried to combine it all together was interesting. I don't think it necessarily all meshes well, but it was at least fun enough. But there is a lot in this episode, even just surrounding the characters of Mepha and her father. Like, we find out in this episode that this man existed in the first place, that he died, that he has a daughter, getting to know her, and that Jet knew her finding out that he's alive and getting her to have a final farewell with him all within this one episode in addition to just the introduction of Fang Shui as even a thing so there's a lot it doesn't really fully have time to develop as best as it could have had there been more time you know have we had a an episode to learn about this guy meet Mepha then more time to go on this little quest and then have a resolution but just again like the detective mystery of it like going on this quest trying to find out what the deal is fighting these random mobster dudes that was fun just some little fun moments with the crew like ed and i and ed playing with the thing and the smoking ban and whatnot but it ended up being very simple in the end i was really expecting some twists and turns especially with it kind of homaging detective stories mysteries We've got this guy who might be dead and then we think he might be alive and since they're under the assumption that he's alive and that's what they're gonna find there I'm thinking okay well obviously their expectations are gonna be subverted and they're gonna find something they didn't expect and it's gonna be something interesting and no it was just him he was alive and there really was no like intricate interesting reason behind it all he just wanted to be able to see his daughter and that's that works that's fine makes sense for the character and we get enough of their backstory to understand them about how he was with this syndicate but wanted to get out and distanced himself how the wife already distanced her and the daughter from him just because of the way he was with the feng shui but then he never went back to them never got near them again because he didn't want to put them in danger he wanted to see her one last time understandable but yeah like just narratively it's it, there's not really much to it at the end there just like oh he was actually alive and all it was is that he wanted to say goodbye to her uh okay yeah <laughs> not like super emotionally invested because there just wasn't enough time but it, it works as a fine enough episode and the feng shui also like it's kind of a big thing to to introduce in this episode along with everything else that's going on in it just because it's it's really vague and i dare say entirely pointless <laughs> like i don't entirely really know what they were going for by introducing that here. I like, it's clearly supposed to be kind of weird, because of course she goes on about it and then Jet's just like, ice cream. <laughs> so, you know, we're, we're in his shoes and we're just kind of like, yeah, feng shui, whatever, girl, whatever you're talking about. But just the whole thing was, was kind of vague, all the talk about it, and I, I don't really entirely know why it needed to be here. Like, did we have to, in to on top of everything else happening, did we have to introduce this whole feng shui system into this couldn't you have just had a daughter on a quest to find her father the only thing about it is like the energy in this sunstone that's related to it but that could have been accomplished without this concept of feng shui it just help her find her father like his history with the syndicate or splitting up from her mom like that doesn't need feng shui in order to work. She could have just split up with him because he wasn't a very... He wasn't there. He wasn't very close to people. You don't need it so that he's 
too into feng shui to not be you know, a people person. You know, it just it felt very vague and kind of ill-defined and any any messages that they were trying to convey with it like jet at the end saying like oh well if i were if i learned one thing uh, i'm not gonna read the horoscopes anymore i'm not gonna read the fortune tellings anymore it doesn't really like hit hard as like a message of the episode just because the whole thing was kind of ill-defined and cobbled together for me at least maybe if there's somebody who just knows more about feng shui in general the episode would do more for them but you know i shouldn't have to know about some totally random other topic in order to to get some enjoyment out of an episode you know and i, I still did get enjoyment out of it honestly like i feel like this episode of cowboy bebop has some of the most problems of any episode that i can think of which makes me understand why some people might not like it much. But yet, despite those problems, just watching it, I wasn't bored. I was entertained well enough for the reasons that I said. So overall, I had a decent time with it, and I think it's an all right episode. But yeah, definitely had some issues in there. You know, like at the end, with him saying like, oh, you know, it was feng shui that brought her to me. And he was like, no, she came here because she wanted to. That's just one of those things where it's like, I don't really doesn't really mean anything to me just because this whole feng shui thing was is too rushed in here and the relationship is just in this one episode and i feel like that's the kind of thing that they they wanted to to really mean something and just because of the way the episode was put together it didn't really hit me the way they maybe wanted it to but yeah it was good to have a jet episode near the end because we don't have all that much time left you know we've got to We've got to resolve stuff with Spike, Vicious, Julia, got stuff left with Faye, hopefully we'll get more for Edward, we still don't know much about her at all, and I want to see more from her and Ayn, and just whatever else they have to do. So it was good to have a Jet episode here towards the end, I did like the focus on his relationship with Mepha, I thought that was enjoyable, and just giving him like this detective story. The story itself, again though, there was a lot to it that didn't really mesh well, and a lot of it was kind of rushed and ended up being very simple, which is the same issue I had with the, the last big Jet episode, Black Dog Serenade, where the story itself is just like one of the most simple stories you can imagine. And then here, the resolution just ended up being like the most simple thing. Her dad is alive. He wanted to say goodbye and, and that's it. So, you know, a lot of problems with the episode. But it was okay. <laughs> You're really curious to hear people's thoughts about this, because like I said, there are a lot of different things in the episode. Just with Mayfa, her father, the feng shui, there's a lot of different tones and styles that they're all meshing together well, the detective stuff, the feng shui and everything, that I would be curious to hear other people's thoughts on it, if they liked Mayfa, if they liked the feng shui, how you thought it all blended together, and how you thought the story played out. There's a lot to it to where I, I would be curious to hear what other people think, but uh, that's about all I have to say about this one for now. It definitely was no Piero LeFou, but you know, I wasn't expecting it to be. So I, for a follow-up to that especially, you know, after having so much fun with that episode, I easily could have been like severely let down by what followed, but I honestly wasn't, so that's a good thing. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on the episode in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the video, and check out all the links down in the description. We got Twitter, we got Discord, we got Patreon. Great stuff. Thank you guys so much for all the help and support, and I'll see you in the next one.